people keep saying I look like Walter White. I will make no further comments on that, but... Um, <laughs> What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Bug of the Week. I'm Brayden, and today we're talking about mayflies. Before we get started, yes, I did shave my head. Spring break was a little exciting. Actually, quite the opposite. I was basically bored, and I was like, well, I neither need to get a haircut or I need to buzz my head because it's a canon event for every guy to shave his head at least once in his life, and I never have. And I was like, well, what the heck? I'm bored. Summer's coming. Let's do it. So I did. And yeah, I think it's the move. Everyone keeps saying that I look like Walter White. Um, but anyways, welcome back to another episode of Bug of the Week. My name is Brayden, and I'm super excited because on this week of going through all of the insect orders, we have finally made it to the mayflies, otherwise known as Ephemeroptera. So let's just jump right into it. Ephemeroptera are the mayflies, and the word Ephemeroptera means lasts for a day, and I'll explain that in a minute but before we talk about that i want to get the general information out of the way so the order ephemeroptera includes 2500 current described species ranging all over the world and about 700 of them being in the united states and canada so moving on to their anatomy the ephemeroptera mayfly adults have a segmented long abdomen somewhat similar to our bug from last week the dragonflies and these insects actually have a lot in common, so I'm going to talk about that kind of throughout their anatomy because there are a lot of similarities between the Ephemeroptera and the Odonata that we talked about last week. So I don't know that this is really a defining feature, but one way that I often see them is their front legs. The front legs of the mayfly are quite prominent. They're long. They kind of outstretch them and protrude them forward which is sort of a unique posture for these but i would say the most defining feature of the mayfly is their wings so much like the wings of the dragonflies that we talked about last week the wings of the mayfly are clear membranous wings but the way that these mayflies differ is that their front wings are much longer and larger than their hind wings which are heavily reduced. And this is a really good identifying feature of the mayflies. Also, much like the dragonflies, many mayflies will have textures or different colors in their wings. So they're not always completely clear. Sometimes they have markings or patterns on them that we can use to tell species apart also. Another very unique feature to the mayflies are their terminal appendages. So we've talked about terminal appendages in the past, Circe, but mayflies have three long terminal filaments going off the end of their abdomen. And so the combination of the wing differences in combination with the terminal appendages really make mayflies easily identifiable. Additionally, when mayflies land, they uh, typically hold their wings up, which is different than dragonflies. Lastly, as adults, mayflies typically have a set of very, very large compound eyes and oftentimes no mouth parts at all as adults. And finally, something that the Ephemeroptera have in common with the odonates that we talked about last week is their direct flight muscles. So last week I talked about how these insects, both these ones and the dragonflies, have direct flight muscles, which means that they're very good, fast flyers, but they're short-lived because of the high metabolic cost that these wings have. So sure, direct flight muscles work, but they're very, very expensive from an energy standpoint. So much like the Odonata. Adults of mayflies are very, very short-lived, even more extremely than the dragonflies are. So that's actually where that name, Ephemeroptera, comes from. Only lasting a day is because oftentimes the adults only live for a day, maybe two days. And so that explains a lot of things about the morphology. First of all, I mentioned their direct flight muscles, which may or may not be a cause for the short lifespan. But I also mentioned that the adults don't have mouth parts, and that's explained by their short lifespan. If you only live for one or two days as an adult, you don't need to eat. You can live off of your stores from your larval stage. And the adults have one goal, right? It's to reproduce. It's to mate, lay a clutch of eggs, and then die. So if they're able to do that in one to two days, 
They don't need to have a mouth. They don't need to be searching for food. They only need to be searching for a mate, which is also where big eyeballs come in. They've got these big eyes. If they have no mouth, they have room for bigger eyes, which means they can more effectively look for a mate. Okay, so that's about the adults of the mayflies. Let's move on to the nymphs. So as with all the hemimetabolous insects we've been talking about so far, the mayflies go through a development from egg to nymph to adult through a series of molts. And much like the dragonflies and damselflies, mayflies also have an aquatic nymph that we call naiads. So the naiads of mayflies are aquatic. They live in freshwater streams, ponds, and lakes, and they're really cool. They look a little similar to nymphs of the dragonfly, but they're a little smaller. They've got gills on the outsides of their abdomen um, that are visible. They're these feather-like gills. And then they also have those three terminal appendages just like the adults do. Okay, so the nymphs aren't really anything amazing, but what's really interesting and weird about the mayflies, or one of the things, I guess, is they have sort of an in-between stage that is also winged. So remember, I always talk about how only adult insects have wings, and I hope that you're noticing that in the world of bugs, there is always at least one exception. And that is this weird in-between phase of mayflies called the subimago stage. So the nymphs actually live in the water for several years. These insects are pretty long-lived as their lifespan as a whole, but just very short-lived as adults. Anyways, as nymphs, they live in freshwater for a couple years. And then when the time comes, it will climb out of the water and molt into this sub-imago stage. So this sub-imago stage, they look similar to the adults. They're a little lighter in color. They're a little more translucent looking. And they have wings. So this non-mature insect does have wings, which is super unusual. This is super weird. We're not really sure like how this happened or why it happens, but basically these mayflies look like adults. They're a little lighter, but they lack the reproductive organs inside. And so they're not quite adults, but yeah, they live as these, this sub imago stage and then they molt again and now they are fully adults and they only live as adults for usually one to two days and this is actually coordinated so usually when mayflies come out and emerge into adults it's usually coordinated in some way and so there's thousands hundreds of thousands even millions of mayflies often emerge at the same time so you're probably wondering Braden, if they only live for one to two days, how do they find a mate? I mean, these bugs aren't very big. They don't have much time or energy. So how do they find a mate? And the answer is these adults are so well designed as adults. They only have one job and that is to find a mate. And so basically all of their morphology is designed to aid itself in finding a partner. So like I mentioned, no mouth, to make room for bigger eyes to look for a mate. That's number one. Number two is those terminal appendages, those cerci I've been talking about. Those also have chemoreceptors, so they're able to pick up chemical signals in the air, also known as pheromones. And so a potential mate will, will put off pheromones, which will be picked up by a potential suitor's cerci. And so they're able to accurately pinpoint that potential mate. Very cool. Additionally, the wings, right? Obviously, wings make it easier to find a mate. They can cover larger distances quicker. So if you think about these three different aspects, these adult insects only have one job as an adult, and they are hardwired and specially designed to complete that one goal. They're, they're supposed to complete the life cycle, lay eggs, and continue their genes. And so what happens is mayfly swarms, these huge, massive emergences of mayflies, can oftentimes be seen from satellites. They can be seen from space on satellite imaging. Here's a picture of one right now. And that's not a storm cloud. That is a cloud of mayflies. It is absolutely incredible. And so what will happen is, you know, these mil millions of mayflies will come out in one day, sometimes up to two days. They will have this massive swarm. They'll mate they'll lay their eggs, they'll die, and then the bodies of these mayflies will just be littering the ground. It's it's amazing. And yeah, they're the only insect that I know of that I think that we can see from space, and it is really amazing. These swarms are so thick that they can reach up to 125 to 250 meters thick and cover hundreds of square kilometers. I mean, it's it's insane. It's like some of the biggest storms that you would think about. That's how big 
a swarm of mayflies can be. And then obviously, the nice thing about these insects, they're not a pest at all. And so when these swarms happen, it's not devastating at all to local people or crops or anything. It's actually really good because that becomes a new nitrogen source, right? So they'll they'll die, they'll land on the ground, and they'll be just cycled back into the environment. The circle of life keeps going. Those insects are cycled back into the nitrogen cycle, and it's it's actually a great thing for the environment. With that, I hope you enjoyed this episode talking about Ephemeraptora. I really enjoyed talking about these insects. They're super interesting. Always very cool, very unique looking. If you guys ever get the chance to see a swarm like that, it's absolutely incredible. Um, super cool event. And I hope you all will tune in next week. Next week, we're talking about Zoraptora, otherwise known as the angel insects, which are a very little known, very small order of insects that I'm excited to learn more about and tell you guys all about. So if you don't want to miss that one, definitely leave a like, subscribe so you don't miss it. And leave a comment if I miss something, if there's a favorite mayfly fact that I might have forgotten, or maybe if you learned something, let me know. With that, I will see you all next week, but until then, keep on bugging. See ya.